All right, everybody, welcome. Classifying rocks, uh, sedimentary rocks. I am Mr. Gazda, and uh, we're going to get going here. Before we get into it, very important, just uh, what are some things we're going to find in, in sedimentary rocks? Well, if it has rock fragments or pieces of rocks that are cemented together, it's sedimentary. If it has a fossil in it, it's sedimentary rocks. Fossils basically form dead organisms that fall to the bottom of a lake or an ocean, fall in the mud, get bar buried in more mud, you have a fossil. Um, sedimentary rocks. If it has a fossil, it's a sedimentary rock. And if it has any rounded particles in there too, that's going to be a sedimentary rock. So let's get into the earth science reference table for these rocks. Here we go. And uh, just uh, I'm going to point some things out here. Um, this sedimentary rocks are in a few categories. This is one, the texture is clastic, meaning fragments of other rocks. Um, that's the basic kind of what you think of. And then there's other kinds, crystalline, which forms from crystals, which uh, I'll get to. And then this is crystalline or bioclastic, and bioclastic on the bottom. Bio means life, clastic means pieces. Pieces of life, our example is coal. Let's put the rocks next to it, just so you can see. That's the point of this. Um, that's the point of this. I'm going to move this over just a bit. And you know what? I'm gonna put them I'm gonna put them right here. So hope that this is gonna work out okay. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this. That's conglomerate. Um breccia or brescia, that's gonna be hard to tell those two apart. Um sandstone Maybe I'll maybe I'll go like this with it. Maybe I'll, I'll do that right, just like this. Okay. I have those two sandstone, and then I have uh, siltstone right here. Siltstone and shale is right here. Shale. Okay. So. Right off the bat, some of the things you notice as I go from the top to the bottom, the size of the particles or fragments get smaller, and they kind of have that in the grain size here. The size does get smaller. Uh, conglomerate is here. If I don't know how well you can see this, you should be able to fo come on, focus. See pebbles, and you kind of see the pebbles in there rounded pebbles that are cemented together. You can kind of see it. Uh, you could if it focused better. Maybe not. Rounded. The difference with the br with the brescia, um, and again, I've had trouble getting good pieces of it. You can't really see it. But this should be much more angular. This piece is not good. Sorry, I just don't have good pieces of it. It should be more angular. That's really the difference. They're large. You can see the particles. Sandstone. Now, maybe I should try to do this. Maybe I need to do this. Cover these up for the further focusing alone. I hope you can see there. There's like a sandy texture. If you were to look close and you have a um, like a small magnifying glass, hand lens we, we call them, you can see the sand grains. You can see a sandy texture to it. You got to look close. Yeah, you can see it there. This is it. The camera's focusing well. You see the sand in there? Okay. You have to look close. You usually need a ma um, like a magnifying lens. And I, I this would be another piece of sandstone of uh, much more red minerals. Let me see. And you can see the sand in here too. Okay, it's probably finer sand than maybe you see at the beach. Although some beaches, some beaches do have very fine sand. And let me see. Come on, focus. Okay, that's really good. You can see the sandy texture there on that sandstone. So that's cool. And I'll put that back. That sandstone. And siltstone is going to be even smaller. Now, you're not going to be able to really see for the most part. Can I just get a sense of the texture? Maybe you look really close, you can kind of make out that it's a really fine, gritty texture to it. That's, that looks pretty good. Okay. 
Okay, siltstone is even smaller. Again, all of these particles uh, are settled out of water for the most part. And then the shale is really going to be that this is going to be made of of clay minerals, basically the smallest particles. Think of the finest, finest mud that there is. That mud that may take days, weeks to settle out of water. Yeah, you can't see the particles here. You would need to cut this and have a microscope here. You can't see them. But that shale. Oftentimes when you see shale out in our copy, it is much more um it's flaky, breaks apart very easily. Okay, that's the classic. Let me see what I have. I don't have all of it here, but I do have some. Here is um you know, push this up. I have rock gypsum right here. Rock gypsum. I have some small pieces of rock salt. I'll put that right over the rock salt right there. And it has a little bit of a reddish tint to it. Uh, Dola stone I have. Dola stone you'll often find is yellowish. It does, uh, it, when it weathers, reacts, is it when it's um, exposed to the weather, it tends to be yellow. Limestone, I'm going to put right here. And coal. And this is bituminous coal. Right here. Now these are um, these are crystalline rocks, so these are going to be harder to tell apart. These are basically cr uh, crystals that form these rocks. So it's basically from the evaporation of water. Let's think of and rock salt is really the best example. If there is a, an ocean that's salt water, and that ocean ends up evaporating all the water evaporates but the salt does not evaporate that gets left behind and when that water gets saturated with the salt the salt will come out of solution or won't be dissolved anymore and will become solid and will basically settle down to the bottom of that of that ocean and if that continues you have a pretty decent sized ocean dry up you could have big beds thick beds of salt that are 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 feet thick or more left behind. And that's where you get rock salt made of the mineral halite. You can't maybe see the mineral so well here. But it is. That's rock salt. Same idea, rock gypsum. Gypsum is often uh, also a mineral that can be dissolved in water. And really the main way to tell this is gypsum is you can scratch it with your fingernail very easily. But it's hard to tell when you first look at them. Dola stone is really... It, it's a little more complicated how that forms, but uh, it's in the limestone family, let's put it that way. But it does have that yellow look to it. Why can't this focus more? Maybe I have to do it. Okay, hard, hard to really tell what they are. It's more important to know how, how they form. Limestone here uh, usually forms in shallow water, and this limestone happens to... I have another piece of it here. Here's... Here's a piece of limestone right here. Okay. But what I really want to point out about this limestone is the fossils that are in here. Okay, this is the fossils I was talking about. And you see they're all fossils of, like, shells. It's probably some sort of brachiopod is what they're called, but they look like seashells that you may find. And this is really loaded with them. I'll cover that up that 10 there. And you can see them on that side too. So that's how you would know this is a sedimentary rock is the fossils. Maybe a little hard for a student to know this is limestone as opposed to siltstone, let's say. And then coal is bioclastic and this is formed from from plants, let's say uh, you have a swamp and from the dead plants in a swamp they don't fully decompose and they tend to pile up and when they get compressed they become coal. In this case the sedimentary rock is bituminous coal that's what this is here. Usually black and uh, usually black just like this. So that is a little intro to uh, sedimentary rocks or review. And uh, thanks for watching. And we're going to go on to metamorphic rocks next. For Mr. Gaston, signing out.